Hey there, this is Anmish and today I'm gonna tell you how you can get free HD quality, photogenic, photographic, artistic, aesthetic, high quality images for free. But I'm not talking about a website. This is special, so stay tuned. Before we begin, let me know down in the comments below where do you search for free images or where do you go for free images. So without any further ado, let's get started. Whenever you're working on a poster, a brochure, a composite, an image or any kind of design, time and again you might need images to assist your design. You might need images to help you with your creative process. So where do you usually go for images? Free images. Images.google.com, right? Google Images. So. First off, the number one problem with Google Images is that not all of the images are of good quality. Most of the images are low quality. Also, number two problem, most of the images are low resolution. And even if you go to the tools and select high resolution in the settings, what happens is all, the, all of the good ones are either watermarked or licensed. Unless you're working for a huge project or a big project for which you're being paid for, it is difficult, even if you're rich, it is difficult to pay $5, $10 or even $80 for an image, for an extended license or any kind of licensed image. It's difficult. So what do you do? Now there are many websites that give you free royalty free images, but the problem is suppose you're working on Photoshop and you're looking for a particular image maybe of the sky, maybe you're working on a design and you're looking for an image to complement the design, a background, a texture, something like that. Now what do you usually do? You close the Photoshop, go to Google Chrome or any other browser you're using. Go to the website, search for the image, download the image, import the image. That's a lot of distractions. Suppose you went to the website and some Facebook notification popped up and you got distracted. But what if I told you, you could search for free images inside of Photoshop without opening Google Chrome or any other browser? I have good news for you. This is possible. You can do this by using a plugin called Pexels. And the great news is it's really expensive in value, but actually it's free. So I have put the download links in the description below. So go ahead and download it and we'll get back in a second. See, you guys are genius enough to figure out how to install the software, but still, if you have any problems, do leave them down in the comments below and I guarantee you, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So let me demonstrate how the Pexels plugin actually looks like and how to use it in Photoshop. So in this example, we are making a book cover. I've already made the template so I don't waste your valuable time. So in the template, let me just quickly go through the template and we'll start the plugin straight away. So it's nothing but in the background, I have put a gray on which I'll insert an image. And above that, there's a black layer for the vignetting and above that, the text, the nature speaks and the shape, the line. Now, how do I open the plugin? So if you don't already see the plugin right here, all you need to do, you need to go to Windows, Extensions and Pexels and the plugin will load up. There's one more disclaimer. For the plugin to work, of obviously you would need an active internet connection to search for images. Now once the plugin loads up, it looks like this. It has already loaded in itself amazing images, recent uploads. If you click on popular, it will load up popular uploads. And the great thing is about the plugin is, suppose you like this image, suppose I like this image, obviously this, this image is really good, really cute. And I press the love button. So whenever I go to the likes, tab, it will show me the images that I have liked. So suppose you like this image and you don't want to get the image lost in the vast library so you can like it and it saves the image in your likes tab. So suppose I'm making a photo book for nature landscapes. So what do I do? I simply search for landscape. So it loads up a series of landscape for me to work on. So I'll go ahead and simply select one that suits the template. Of course, you can choose the image first and then add text and make the template. But also, you can make the template first and choose the image that suits the template. So anyway works. So anything that works for you is great. So let me look for an image that suits the background. So I'm just still scrolling in. So suppose uh, I want, okay, this image, this image suits the best. So suppose I want this image. Now before clicking, there's a thing, there's a trick, there's a tiny settings gear right here. So you need to click it and uncheck this. What happens? Now, 
If you're working on that type of design where you have different images, where you have placeholders for different images, at that point of time, you may keep it checked. But otherwise, I prefer to keep it unchecked. When to use it, how to use it, I'll discuss it later. But for now, if you want to include the whole of the image, then you would click it and make it unchecked. Okay, once you make it unchecked, you simply click on the image and it will download the image or, and insert it right in the background. Now, since this layer, the background layer was selected, the image has been loaded just above the background layer. So this does look beautiful. But you know what? I'm missing something. What am I missing? Only if this image had a little more clouds. But you know what? This is Photoshop and we can do that right from Pexels. So let's open up the plugin again and let's type simply clouds. I, I type clowns. Clouds is nothing. Clouds. Okay. It's a lot of clouds. Select the ones that fit you. So I think this one is a nice one. So I'll click this one and this will simply load up in that. Now the problem is I just want the clouds. So what do I do? I want the clouds in the background and this image in the foreground. So all I need to do, I need to cut off. I need to remove the sky from this image so that I can see the clouds in the image that is beneath that layer. So to do that, simply select the image, okay? And select any selection tool, even the rectangular marquee tool will do. So select it and click select and mask. Decrease the transparency and using the quick selection tool, just select the sky of the background. Now, once the sky is selected, let's decrease the transparency, increase the transparency. So it shows you that this area, this sky is selected. So automatically, very quickly, it has been selected. Now it's time for us to refine the edges. Of course, it has not gone inside the trees and selected the clouds, uh, selected the sky. So we need to do that. So let's zoom in and see whether it has done the selections efficiently or not. Most of it is efficient. It's brilliant. Now let's go ahead and refine the edges. To refine the edges, something went wrong. Okay, to refine the edges, select this tool and just brush over the edges that you want in your selection. And it will do the job automatically. Of course, let's decrease the opacity and just brush over the skies. Okay, so when you're doing it, take your time do it properly and I'm just doing it quickly to demonstrate. You need to make your brush smaller and just paint over the sky areas which are inside the tree. So let's do that really quickly. Okay. Pretty much nice selection here. Let's decrease the Transparency to see where the skies appear. Okay, this area, this area is remaining. Select this area. It's perfectly fine. Let's look whether the selections are nice enough here. It's good, it's good, it's not bad. When you're doing, take your time, make the selections properly, and we're good to go. Once you're satisfied with it, click OK. And now you'll see that the sky is, has appeared and the foreground has disappeared. We want just the opposite. What do we do? Select the mask and press Control I. Boom. Now we have the clouds. But another problem, I don't want to see the land right here. So simply select the background and take it down and make this a little bigger. And you're good to go. Yep. It's done. Click OK. You can always go ahead and refine the edges. But you know what? It looks perfect. It look, does look perfect. You can take it a little bit down to match, to just show the sky. It looks really, really awesome. Now I need to make it a little bit bigger. You can always refine the edges in the end. OK. Uh, ah, yeah. Looks nice. So that's how you make composites using pixels. Now let's look at another example. So this is my, let's, it's, a, it's a design example. So this is my logo. So instead of black in the background, let's make the background a little bit white. Instead of black in the background, I want something funky. 
suppose I want mountains. So what do I do? So select the background layer so that above that, the image will appear. So select the background layer and open the Pexels plugin. And once you do that, what do I want? I want mountains. So select the mountain you want. I like this one. So yeah. And it does that automatically. Look how beautiful it looks. Much better than just black. So you can control the size, right? You can do all of the funky stuff. You can stretch it. You can do everything you want. Hit enter and you're good to go. So as you can see how easy it is to use this plugin. Now, let's talk about the clipping mask feature in the plugin. Now, suppose you're working on an image with a lot of elements. So let's create a new document. So this time we'll create any document just for illustration purposes. Let's create one. And once you do it, let's make a rectangle. Suppose you want images here. Images here, let's change the color to anything but not white. You want images right here and you want an image here. So in that aspect, you select the first rectangle and open the Pexels plugin and then suppose you want to insert the mountain image. Then you go ahead, suppose you want the image only to be confined in that rectangle. Then you go ahead and check this create clipping mask and then you click that mountain and the image will load up only in that rectangle. So as you can see, the image has confined itself to the rectangle. So you can, we can always go ahead and make it smaller or bigger according to our wish and we are good to go. Amazing. Now let's look at some other examples. So let me close that down. I don't want to save it. Oh, okay, so let's look at this one. So suppose you're writing an article, make, let me make the background a little bit darker. Suppose you're working an, on an article or a design, an article post or something like that. So I have created one article for you, the beauty within. And this text actually doesn't mean anything. So I want an image on the right hand side. So I'll select the background layer, the layer just beneath this rectangle. So layer just beneath the rectangle and I'll click the Pexels plugin and I need a picture of say a little girl i would search for it and i would select any image oh they look really great so amazing amazing i'll just resize the image make it a little bit smaller okay and it's to the right and we're good it looks beautiful isn't it so free images have never been so easier. So let's look at our last and final example. For the last example, let's create a website background. How do you do that? Go to File, New. And the great feature about Photoshop 2017 is that it already has a lot of presets in visuals for you so that every time you don't have to go manually and type the parameters. So suppose you want to create a website background. You just simply go to Web and select Web Large and create and that's it. It's that simple. Now, suppose I'm making a motivational website. Suppose a website which sells motivational books or cassettes or CDs. Who uses cassettes anyway? So motivational CDs and books. So let's search for motivational images. So I'll simply open up the plugin and type motivation. And let's see what comes. Let's see, select the image that you like. I'll just scroll in to see the image that I like. Hey, this image looks interesting. So I'll just simply click on this image and it will simply import it over the document. Now, once it does that, it looks, it looks beautiful. So I need to adjust the image according to the document size. Yeah, it looks nice. So suppose I want to add some text. I can do that, create a new layer and let's create a solid layer. Since the background here is a little bit of distracting and I want to add text here, let's create a gradient of black. So I have created a solid black layer and let's add a gradient in the mask. Like so, like this. It looks good. Oh, it's not black, select the black and white and let's create a gradient like this to add text. Now, it does look cool, but the problem here is the gradient is also pouring into the man. I don't want that to happen. I want the man to stand out of the gradient and the background to get immersed into the gradient. So how do I do that? Let's create a copy of this layer again 
and keep this layer above it. Now, what if I just cut out all of the background from this layer? What will happen? Only the man will show up. So the man will be above the background, above the gradient. So first off, let's create a mask and remove the background. This is very simple using the new select and mask feature in Photoshop 2017. So create the mask button and click on the mask and this will load up the select and mask. And if it doesn't happen, if it doesn't happen, let me go back, select the rectangular marquee tool or lasso tool or any other tool and click select and mask. And simply start selecting the man. Brilliant, so let's zoom in. And let me move and start selecting the man. The violin, him, the, the rod with which he's playing violin. I don't know what it's called, but let's select this. Now, it looks pretty good. Let's refine the edges just a little bit. Okay, so there's a selection left. Oh, oops. Okay, the selection up right here. And let's refine the edges. And I think we're good. Let's zoom out and see if it's looking beautiful. Yes, it's looking really pretty amazing. Click OK. And we're good. Now, as you can see, without this layer, with this layer, this man has really brightened up. So we can go ahead and add the text that we like. Let's mm, select the text tool and type anything. Work hard. Play hard. That's the new Wiz Khalifa song. Not new, but I like that song. Oh, play hard. All right, just got carried away. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. And we're good. You can change the color if you like. You can click this and you can change the color to your liking. Maybe let's go with blue. It looks royal, doesn't it? looks royal and suppose you want the gradient to merge well with the seats what do you do right click in this layer and go to blending options hold alt and press this it breaks down this layer and this remove anything which is bright in the background so so this area was bright so th these chairs were bright what this does is that it removes the brighter areas from that layer so if something is bright in the layer beneath this layer, then that area will be deselected or removed from this layer. But it is a mask, okay? It's not permanent. Click OK. And let's select the adjustment to our liking and click OK. It looks good, doesn't it? So with Pexel's Photoshop plugin, the possibilities are limitless. But if you're not using Photoshop or if you are using any other editing software, you still can take advantage of this Pexels service. But this time, all you need to do, they have their own website. You could go to pexels.com and you could search for any image that you like, download it and import it in your software. The great thing about Pexels website is that they allow you to search by color. Suppose you're looking for an image, but you want that image to be yellow. You want that image to have lots of yellow or blue or green. You can select that and you'll get it. Suppose you're searching for a landscape with lots of green, lots of lush green background, stuff like that. You can select the color and it will show you all the images with the greenery. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you and if it did, do give us a thumbs up and also do consider subscribing for not so much talked about Photoshop tips, tricks, tutorials and updates from the creative community. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.